All right, people. Can you hear me? So we're starting the recording here. Uh, June the 12th, Open Source Ecology Developer Meeting. So let's get going in the first. So first place, take a look at the agenda. And introducing a new new player on the team as well today. We've got Eric. So please take a look at the link. Okay, that's the current working meeting document on a wiki. It's called current meeting at the OSC wiki. Okay, um, so welcome everybody. And I'd like to introduce, so we've got Eric Polner joining the team today. Uh, he's been involved in some of the bioplastics work. In fact, we documented, the, like, for example, procedures to, to do PLA and other bioplastics on the wiki long time ago. And I, it's actually something we want to return to probably next year to, to actually produce some of these experiments, feasible production of bioplastics on a small scale. So welcome, Eric. And we're going to talk tonight about your, your uh, three-month work plan. And Eric's also going to come to the OSC boot camp in late August. So that's, that's good. Um, we're moving right along here. So let's see who else we got. We got Ruslan and Abe. So on my side, I just want to update you what's, what's happening with um, latest on the recruiting for the the immersion programs and everything else. I've sent out a bunch of publicity off to different universities posting on internship or rather fellowship uh, announcements for universities. So basically top grading that. So putting an announcement on just about like all the taking a look at all the top universities in the States, United States and Canada and posting on their different boards. So I'm going to continue that and finish it off. And it's, it's short timing. We've got only got like two months for the applications to come in, but um, that's great to to get pretty much the misfits from all the colleges and universities to join into this program as we have the ability to accept people right now and, and make it work. So uh, with that said, uh, that's going forward. The next, uh, I wanna take a look at just the, the critical path, the de development narrative on the slide number four. So if you take a look at that, um, let's see, I only see two people on the, um, on the slide there or on the presentation. Can you guys, let's see, we got Ruslan, Abe, and Paul. If you click on the, so in the chat box, if you click on a document, you should all take a look at that. I only see two people in there. We've got uh, at least one more person. So please take a look at that, um, whoever's not, clicked in there so on the critical path you can take a take a look at the development narrative link on the wiki but we're moving along along primarily along the personal microfactory route there so uh, the purple ones are workshops so we just had the Lawrence 3d printer build Lawrence Kansas uh, in about 10 days I'm going off to Eugene Oregon to do the 3d printer workshop there and Actually, right after that, I'm going to attend the, there's a, it's called the Eastern Rep Rap Festival, East Coast Rep Rap Festival, and that's 23rd and 24th of June. So I want to actually go there and make contacts with other people through, with all the relevant, uh, basically to recruit potential developers, collaborators, and I'm also going to talk to people about uh, joining as an OSC as running workshops because the people at the 3D printer meets there's a lot of a lot of people who already run 3D printers so how about if they take on the D3D and and run workshops we can train people to do that and the the current way to do that is go through the boot camp and then participate in a few few events as an assistant and then actually start doing it on your own we can pay you for that uh, we're looking at like six hundred dollars per event right now that I think that works as far as the financial model there. Uh, but of course, you'd have to get trained and, and get them get certified to, to do that with us. Um, so that's 23rd, 24th. That's going to be cool. I, I really like those events. There, you know, lots of hacking going on, lots of new ideas, and and just state of you know finding out what's the state of art, what everyone is doing. 
So, so very good stuff. And after that, um, on the critical path is a CNC circuit mill workshop. So let's take a look at that. If you go to um, www.opensourceecology.org, uh, go to workshops, and we posted that announcement. So that's going to be a good one on the CNC circuit mill. So our first ever workshop on the circuit mill. The results are really good. Shane killed it uh, in terms of getting the accuracy and the shakedown of that machine, including a full open source tool chain for leveling, for generating the files and so forth. So you can look at that. Uh, and unfortunately, sorry, I can't share my screen here. So go to opensourceecology.org workshops and programs um, and click on the, I'm going to paste that in. So this is, I'm using OSC Linux right now. And we got to fix this thing within OSD Linux. It does not allow me to do the screen sharing the way that that um, the web browser is installed with using Chromium. So I'm trying to type paste in the link here. There it is. Right. Thank you, Ruslan. Um, very exciting. Uh, I think this gets us to to the ability to do power electronics. Open source ecology. You've identified the 50 most important machines that we think takes for modern life to exist. Okay, we're gonna have things to from tractors, bread ovens, circuit makers. Then we set out to create an open source DIY do-it-yourself version that anyone can build and maintain at a fraction of the cost. Hey, we call this the Global is that me? Construction Set. Oh, no. So let is me tell you me? a story. So I finished my 20s or with a PhD in fusion energy, and I discovered I was useless. I had no practical skills. Is that me or is that one of you guys? World presented me with Cut options, that out, whoever's them. doing that. I guess you can me? call it the consumer lifestyle. So I started a farm no, I don't think that's me. in Missouri and learned about the economics of farming. Who is I that? Who's doing that? Let's cut it out. Then it broke. I paid to get it repaired. Yeah. Then it broke again. And pretty soon, I was broke too. I realized that the truly appropriate, low-cost tools that I needed to start a sustainable farm and settlement just didn't exist yet. I needed tools that were robust, modular, okay, can we, can highly we efficient, optimized, doing that? low cost, made from local and recycled materials that would last a lifetime, not designed for our <laughs> People, please. I found that I would have I've to heard that about 5,000 times already. That. And I tested them. Eric, is that you? And I found that industrial productivity can you be think achieved you're muted. on a small Man, scale. Where is that coming from? So then I published uh, the 3D designs, schematics, I don't see it on my instructional mind. videos, and budgets on a wiki. Then contributors from all over the world began showing up. Wow, I don't know what happened. Oh, I get it. It's um, when you open up that, and for some reason, that thing starts auto-playing there for, um, within WordPress. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, uh, I do want to, let me, let me just uh, reopen that, reopen the closed tab there, see if that still happens. Yeah, no, I just wanted to emphasize some of that. We're, we're going to build an open source uh, oscilloscope during this workshop and some little power electronic device, something like a charger or a power supply or something like that. It's a three-day workshop, so it's going to be uh, one is the build of the complete CNC circuit mill, including the ability to take parts to if you want to build one for yourself. Um, there's a full detailed schedule of all that's going on. And as you see in the pictures, I mean, that, you know, the, that's some pretty good results, like half millimeter wide traces. And the good thing is it's exactly the same D3D universal access system with still the metal frame, so showing the multi-purpose capacity of the, the construction set probe. So that's, that's excellent stuff. Um, measurements, um, detailed schedule. Uh, so Shane is going to be co-teaching that. So it's myself and Shane. Shane from Michigan Tech. Those people really do good work. 
they are they just publish the the filament maker and they they collaborated on a CNC circuit mill so it's it's great collaboration with those guys from Michigan Tech that's one of the uh, things that one of the university collaborations that are really working for us and pretty much people who are collaborating substance with producing substance for the global village construction set uh, so great stuff there and so that's the workshop coming up early July and then looks like for early August we'll do the filament maker and it's not on a calendar yet but I'm in touch with Dr. Pierce from Michigan Tech uh, I'm gonna see if we can hold it up at Michigan Tech that would be a great place we would have a, an example of the working filament maker there and we could build an army of them that would be a, a pretty interesting event and a chance to meet with the team from Michigan Tech University again so that's good and somewhere towards uh, the end of August, we're going to squeeze in a laser cutter workshop, meaning an addition of a small laser diode once again to the D3D CNC circuit, uh, D3D universal access platform. And then we've got the big immersion in September, the boot camp and immersion there. So uh, that's essentially the program. And thinking about, uh, I just want to, emphasize some of the milestones how do we get to grow as the organization once we get our OSC fellows on board well um, I want to share some of the milestones for for the fellows but once we get a team of fellows on and trained through the five weeks of deep immersion then we're in a position to start uh, verifying some of the other things like like first thing as far as a milestone on that is verify the scalability of the of the workshops program is there really a market like like we think for that um, and we think right now that it is and the proof is going to be when we have uh, the goal of four people working with us and that actually works so we're not going to go bankrupt as OSC and can't can't pay the people pay our people to do that we have to we have to prove that it works because the funding from that comes actually from running the workshops so uh, let me go through a couple of notes on the OSC fellows critical path so um, let me put that into the just to share that and explain that a little bit because it kind of talks about where is this thing dismiss dismiss I'm not able to type this in, but um, go to the go to my log MJ and OC follows critical path. So, um, so first of all, validate the feasibility of our extreme manufacturing once it's scaled to multiple people in multiple locations. What are the limits of that? We have to determine that because that will determine how much we can grow with that. And of course, we want repeat customers. As in, if we go to a school and do a workshop say on a 3d printer we've got more we've got the cnc circuit mill we've got the filament maker laser cutter and an overall open source microfactory infrastructure so a desktop microfactory so the next thing on it is design jams can we actually work with all the schools and libraries and everyone and engage them in in prototyping like starting up clubs like school clubs for open source product development along the lines of the open source everything store meaning with the desktop microfactory, you can produce a lot of different items, just like Libre Solar with the maximum PowerPoint tracker, things like that. We want to talk to them about um, deploying that as a real product that we can actually market and sell. As, I, um, as I'm saying, 80% probably of consumer goods can be produced with open source microfactory desktop version. So jams, uh, design jams. Um, another point is the validate does the open source everything store idea work is that model of distributed desktop microfactories producing products and developing them collaboratively is that a re reasonable feasible thing to develop products that's going to compete with amazon and walmart in the future well that's one thing to determine um, we also want to validate materials production so so focusing on a desktop microfactory bioplastics 
actually making the bioplastics, not just recycling, but making them. Say, say your, your starch-based uh, PLA, which is a bacterial culture. Can we start culturing that and making real PLA as an industrial plastic off the trees of our farm and things like that, or of, of whatever starch sources we have uh, in any location? Other things, metal embedded filaments. Imagine 3D printing and embedding a tiny metal filament through the same extruder or a different extruder uh, to make wire reinforced plastics. That's something that actually Michigan Tech, they've actually pioneered some of that. They're actually doing metal embedding, metal filament embedding within uh, 3D prints, but in a different way. They're not extruding the, the metal, they're actually already have a metal lattice that they print around. It's a little different. Uh, we want to validate the 3D printing in metal. So that's, once again, most Michigan Open Source Technology Lab. Once again, they've done some of the pioneering work on that, but that's definitely to be developed because there are plenty of practical things I think we can do, like like windmill towers. Imagine a little climbing robot with a, with a welding gun that travels up, uh, starts on the ground, and then tra travels up the structure, depositing a 3D printed metal tower. Talking about megawatt scale wind turbines, or 100 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt scale wind turbines. So that's 3D printing in metal, using a self, like a wall climbing robot. That's proven technology. Um, and then validate insulation printing, like ceramics, like meaning clay that you then bake. Um, let's see. Validate the six millimeter filament. That's a standard that E3D, the company, is developing. So wider, bigger filament for printing much larger things. Uh, we want to validate the, rep the, the recyclability of all kinds of filaments, like from ABS to PET, all the common household plastics that literally, uh, even your like shopping bags, you're just throwing into the the plastic muncher to squeeze out 3D printing filament out of that as a product for maybe for bulk uh, 3D printing. So the scalability proof that we want to do is um, up to what I, I would think that two by three by eight foot printer for printing up to plastic lumber, panels of polycarbonate and so forth. So, so think about like all the scrap plastics you can find that become a treasure now. You can 3D print them into things like plastic lumber that's just going in your little micro factory at home. You can be building house building materials that never rot. Things like that. So validate the scalability of scalable 3D printing. Uh, we've already built a, a, a small six foot tall 3D printer last year. That, that seems to work. Uh, we didn't use it much. We didn't really run it. But it's easy to do if you go scaling that in a vertical direction because Z scaling is easy. Um, we want to validate printing, 3D printing of electric motors. And I was also thinking hydraulic components that run on pressurized water. So think about like we have hydraulics for tractor, which are high pressure. You can do low pressure with water using 3D printed parts. Uh, I think that's state of art. I don't think anybody has done that that I know of. They do have like 3D printed microfluidics and things, but 3D printed structures that are that work on water. And why? Because then, for example, think about a, a device like like a uh, the the farm bot, which has got stepper motors, an automated device for for planting plants. Well, you don't want to have electronics out in the environment. How about hydraulics? which are compatible with water. They don't care if they get wet because they run on water. Uh, so you, you pump water and it makes things move. So say hydraulic stepper motors or hydraulic motors uh, for your ex outdoor use farm bot. That would be the relevance of hydraulic 3D printed components. Uh, it's doable. And all these items de require like a year of development and all that. But uh, if we start building up a team, we can start tackling all these different points. I just want to put them on a roadmap so we're aware of all the things that can be done with uh, a 3D printer. So another thing is, uh, think about a 3D printer wall, like nine uh, D3D stacked against the wall, possibly with automatic part harvesting that are your, your workhorse production micro, micro facility that can produce real goods for the open source everything store. 
So that's kind of the roadmap. And a couple more things. There's a, a little bit of psychology here. And, and um, without getting that into that too deep, but human like personal development. So one of the things we're going to look for is how do we develop our capacity to work as a transparent, open team where we're really synergizing and collaborating. And, and I would say the most, one of the most critical things to open source culture is your self-esteem, actually, because a high level of self-esteem allows you to be, um, you know, people can't mess with you. You're okay, and therefore you can publish early and often. So I would attribute the culture of vulnerability, such as publishing early and often, not like waiting till you have a final product and you're all proud of it. Uh, it takes some some psychological strength to be able to collaborate openly, to be vulnerable, to publish things that are early without worrying what somebody's going to think about that. That's all about self-esteem. So I say that on our team as a group, we want to develop that capacity. Actually, there's a seminal book that um, OSC Critical Reading List. Uh, OSC Reading List. Uh, I'm actually putting four main books on that that I think are underlie all the philosophy of this. Uh, OSC read, Required Reading, it's called. I've got four books on there right now that I think are summarize everything that that's there. Homo Deus, Homo Sapiens. This is these are both by Yuval Harari. The Six Pil Pillars of Self Esteem by uh, what's his name? Nathaniel Brandon and Political Panorology, which is the study of mass scale psychosis, which is quite relevant to fixing up the world today. So, that, so like, how do how do whole societies go nuts, like a Hitler or whoever, or or return to say racism today or whatever, whatever you got? Um, how are those mass psychological movements? occurring like how does that relate and once again i do believe self-esteem is a critical antidote and if you want to read about history the the first two books homo deus and homo sapiens uh cover one the technological history and two the human history of all the human human uh, institutions and technological institutions those are those two are seminal before i had things like there's buckminster fuller critical path there's gandhi autobiography there's the green history of the world um and some others that to me were seminal seminal reading they still are but i just would say that the yuval harari books here homo deus and homo sapiens they go through all of that pretty much i mean they're they're much broader and so forth so if you want a tiny reading list there it is four books right there um that i recommend highly so that's that's in my report and let's uh, move on to others so so eric for you as a new person what we do every every day is we type in our um like on a slide number one we type in our agenda for what we want to talk about i ran a little bit over i ran into 20 minutes instead of 10 but there we are. Um, and so, Ruslan, if uh, I actually wanted to ask you about, um, can we get Martin Yeager? Excuse me, I, I have to uh, switch out audio problem. And I will okay. restart. Okay. You're restarting your computer? Only button. Now it's gone. Okay, you're good? Everything is okay. Okay. So, yes. Uh, I want to see if so. So part of the culture of OSC is us teaching each other about everything. Like you know, you're teaching us about recap and so forth. You bring in the OSC Germany guys, but can we bring in uh, one of those guys to talk to us about the the maximum PowerPoint tracker? Because I think we can definitely use that. I was looking at the open source photovoltaic system for the CD Eco Home, and I think as is the maximum PowerPoint tracker is something that we could use definitely because we use PowerPoint trackers in our open source PV system. And I would just love to do an open source one. The ones we use today uh, can handle probably twice as much power. Uh, they cost $130 each, but but it's good to just getting into what OSC Germany has done so we can build upon it. What do you think about that? Uh, can we invite well, those guys? Actually, actually, I wrote to my slide. Uh, page five. Yeah. Invite invite someone from uh, Cos H group. 
Okay, you answer my, my questions. You, you would like to uh, oh, invite you... someone. Oh, so this is this is convergence here. Yeah, I, I looked at your log and I saw you, you, you made contact with those people. At, this is Hamburg University or TU Hamburg. Uh, for applied science, we have multiple universities in Hamburg. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, invite those. Uh, so, so what I would do is uh, if we could get a you know, short report from them, say like 20 minutes where we can we can get filled in on what they have and how that applies and see if we can coordinate, transfer that to us because uh, I'd like to see if we can replicate it. Yes, this would be great. And uh, they, they do a good job. There are many students. Mm -hmm. They have a different field of expertise. And uh, uh, I talk with one guy from this group, with Michel. Mm -hmm. And he, he explained me also about possible collaborations. And what, what is also nice, uh, uh, they, uh, they contribute according to their expertise. For example, um, the students who, uh, who do icons and graphics, they oh, have yeah. uh, experience in graphic. And if you will go to their... Um, I saw that. To the side with instructions, you see that someone uh, did really a good job. Yeah, I oh, saw well, that. And it's... It, 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 it's not correct. Not someone, the, the whole group, but they, uh, they have uh, different skills. And this is uh, a nice thing about it that um, they don't do only uh, technical parts, but also. Uh, Media and, and yeah, like what which, which uh, I'm not sharing my screen, but yeah, like those icons that are on their collective open source hardware GitHub.io, right? Those are very nice icons. Yeah, they they reminded me of uh, what we're doing a little bit too. Are they? Do you know if they're using open source tool chains for those? Uh, possibly yes. Uh, if you know, if they are, I would actually like to ask them to give us a little lesson on that. How how do they do that? I mean, we should we should uh, cross fertilize, learn from each other. So if they've got good techniques for that, they do have. I mean, according to how these icons look, they got some good standards defined for them. So I like I like those. They look pretty nice. Um, I also saw some dry, uh, dry. <laughs> it's a three-dimensional um, movie. Animation uh -huh. by them in yeah. Blender. It's very nice. Probably it will soon be publicly available, then you can see. Wow, a technical documentation or a, or a, or a film? Art. 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 Art, okay. Artistic. Yeah. Very artistic, yeah. but uh, with open source philosophy. So that's Blender? And some explanation. I mean, we're talking about Blender? With Blender. Yeah. Okay, yes. So that's some of the skills we need to learn too on our team. Blender, getting into animations with Blender, that's something uh, we want to definitely document for on our side, develop workflows for those things. Mm -hmm. And this also, uh, I'm using OSE Linux right now, but basically all those, uh, all that infrastructure should be put on OSE Linux with that set up for people to basically dive in and write into all those kinds of workflows. Yeah. Would be good. Um, so let's see. So can you see if we can for next week actually get one of them for a twenty-minute presentation? Uh, yes, I will talk with this group if, if they will. Uh, is Conf, is, is, is Martin discussion. Eager in that group as well? Is that as well? Group? Yes. He's uh, a. Uh, he he's one of, of this group. There are many. And there are many people there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. Um, and what we also talked about uh, was the possible collaboration uh, with uh, three uh, yeah three D printer. Right. Yeah. Um, so, how many people are there on a Kosh team? That's a student group at at the university. 
Uh, if you click on the link, you have a photo. Who we are? Photo. photo. Yeah, I see. Them. Two, four, I see like seven people in that group. So that's... There, there are more. Uh-huh. It's Hamburg and University of Applied four... Sciences. Yeah. Yes. And in the picture below, you even see Oliver. Yeah, because he he contribute, uh, oh, he yeah. work with this group. Okay, Oliver in the back there. Okay, very good. Yeah. And I think more people join join the group. Mm -hmm. And Martin is the guy that's uh, in the top photo. He's in a blue shirt, blue sweatshirt. Yes, and. Uh, Michelle is uh, with the uh, with the hat, the, with the black cap. Okay, excellent. Yes, they look like a healthy, positive group. Let's work with them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they they are, they are very good, very nice, and uh, this possible collaboration is also interesting because it will uh, it will involve uh, students and uh, possibly also. Um, Professors. Very nice. Yeah, that's really it's, good. Uh, mm -hmm. It is uh, this similar like our groups, but uh, it is possible to um, to use it as a, as a part of uh, university uh, studies. Something like uh, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Yeah, for mm -hmm. credit, they can do some work for credit. For credit, for credit. But it's, uh, it's not that easy, at least uh, there are some possibilities and uh, there is also some, uh, uh, there is a special organization, Hamburg Open Online University. And uh, there, this group is also part of, of this larger organization, which uh, offer online courses. Um, and where is this online university thing? Is that also at at the Hamburg University of Applied Science, or different? Uh, it, it is a, a collaboration of multiple Hamburger universities. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, Hamburg University of Applied Science is uh, part of, of this group. It's a larger organization. Yeah. A larger project. Larger yeah. project in Hamburg. So, so was Martin responsible for starting this, the Libre Solar and this Kosh group? Uh, or I, I don't know what, what is. Uh, uh, the, I don't know the history and the um, particular ta uh, task of the group. They also have a, a different uh, focus focuses. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot say that this is uh, the, the, the person um, who is uh, responsible for organization. And I also don't know much about the group and this internal structure. I just met them uh, multiple times mm -hmm. and uh, don't uh, spend so much time to, to understand the precise organization. Maybe there is even none. Yeah. No, that's really good. It's like, wow, that's encouraging. It's, uh, I would call that the Michigan Open Source Technology Lab and this group, I guess, are the two really good ones out there or well, at least that they're actively collaborating or doing similar work yes uh, uh, what, what also nice uh, they finished uh, a lot of uh, stuff they, they made an instruction and uh, yeah. the solar looks is working yeah yeah it's and very nice to have something fi uh, complete yeah yeah that's really good um do, you wouldn't know, like, what's, the, for example, for the maximum PowerPoint tracker, what's the price on the components for that if you, uh, bill of materials cost, do you know? Uh, not by heart, but... Uh, is, there a, is there a bill uh, of materials? Uh, 
Yes, I, I think they, they provide the build materials in their instructions. I think it was only with an uh, keypad. I, I was looking through that and I don't think they had like a price list. There might have been a file for within keycat because I think keycat has build materials capacity. So yeah. Okay, no, that's good. That's excellent. So yeah, let's see what we can do with them next week. Um, I also looked at your video on uh, the flamingo with the piping, piping workbench and free cut. That was good that you can bind things together and angles of connectors will adjust automatically. That's really nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of uh, flamingo piping, uh, I think the PVC piping workbench is finished. Uh, there are some little things to do, which I can do uh, uh, parallel to other tasks, but uh, it's no more my, uh, my main task. Uh, yes. Okay. We, we can celebrate <laughs> now. The, the, Celebration. The of, of, of little PVC too. <laughs> No, okay, that, that's good. So what are our steps as a team? So are we to the instructions are, I guess, for everybody to start working with it a little bit to, you know, just to get familiar with the capacity. And um, let's see, wh wh what's the master wiki page on the piping workbench there? It's, uh, what is that? Oh, I don't know. Um. Piping workbench? Uh, yes, uh, I will look for it. Uh, I've been using it for, for a long time. Do um. you want to do that? Oh, let's see, piping workbench, I see. Okay. Um, so, installation instructions are there uh, that worked. Now, did, your latest version is up on GitHub. Do you recommend we do that right now, or you got to? You want us to start testing it more? I, want, I think everyone should be encouraged to just download it and make sure it works for them and because there are some really nice features in there just while using uh, really Yes, nice I think uh, it, it should work. Okay. Of course, I will improve it from time to time, but now the, uh, um, the main parts are fixed and I will not, uh, I hope I will will not change uh, a lot of stuff now. Right. So the idea there is this should also be added to the default install of the OSC FreeCAD distribution in the OSC Linux. I believe that we should have that all available. So if we're working on any house plumbing or other projects that require this, we have that at our fingertips. Yeah. Um. Possibly, or you, you can always download from GitHub. Oh, I'm, now I'm not sure about always download from GitHub. Now GitHub belongs to Microsoft. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Maybe mm -hmm. we should be. Nevertheless, um, it's still uh, a better version. But I will not change dimensions. Okay. Um, yeah, if it's if it works, um, if it has a lot of good functionality, I think we should add it. I think we're ready to add it to the OSC Linux. I'll take a look at it, see what we need. Because well, we definitely want to publish the next iteration of OSC Linux for the, the immersion program. So everyone's on the same page. We're all using it. So there's no conflicts in software. That's the big, big deal. We're avoiding all this, all, that, all kinds of software issues by doing that. And last comment to wrap up on, uh, just to, uh, with, with respect to your comment that maybe use the D three D CNC circuit mill to mill the the power control the maximum power point tracker and charger charge controller. Yeah, that's correct. And I want to find out from the people, um, the Hamburg people why they decided against doing something like, for example, uh, a shield for an Arduino, because then you can eliminate a lot of the complexity of the board itself by, by using the power, by putting the power handling components onto an Arduino shield so you can be more modular about the design. And that's the kind of um, 
design pattern I like to see so that the brute force components we can definitely mill with our circuit mill for power electronics and things but the very tiny features like are found on a on a on a charge controller I'm not sure the D3D would be able to do the very tiny tiny components that are on there so we can separate that by using existing things like existing Arduinos and using using uh, shields as a as a way to modularize the design a little more so that's that's a discussion we can have perhaps for next week uh, if we get um, someone to our team meeting so let us know like as soon as you find out about this so we can plan for that for the meeting get the, put them on a schedule okay. mm -hmm. excellent okay. anything else or is that uh, so D3, what do you mean I got a question for you what's d3d printer adjusted what do you mean Okay. I will correct it. I adjusted the DPD printer workbench because I, I changed a lot of uh, OS Python workbench and uh, the 3D printer you uh, calls um, functions from the C Python workbench and uh, that's why I need to adjust mm -hmm. the OS D3D printer workbench. Right. So the 3D printer workbench, uh, currently we've got, so we basically are leaving that at the ability to create frames, right? And further than that, yes. there's more work to be done. Now, just like you, right, so just like you did the frame within the D3D print, 3D printer workbench, uh, someone who's, who's knowledgeable in and FreeCAD could take that and start adding additional functions to that, right? I mean, there's, we can add more buttons for different, for inserting different features and then take it from there. So would you recommend that somebody just take it, take it from there? Like if we say, find somebody to do that? Yes. Why not? It's open source. Well, okay, let's do that. Yeah, so I think that would be good. Uh, and and just to summarize on the regarding the the part library workbench, where are we leaving that? You just to review that part. Um, I will probably uh, remove some code there and make it very light lightweight. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I will I will test it with uh, with Uniprocit uh, from OSE Germany. Mm -hmm. in order to uh, to create a t slot frame okay and this will this will would be uh, if it, if the main idea is okay to use this kind of uh, of uh, of workbench and uh, i will also ask uh, for help uh, the german os e group maybe they will test uh, test it's too. And if it works, then I will remove uh, all the unnecessary okay. stuff and it will be some kind of template. That's and uh, we, we can integrate some of these parts uh, again into uh, um, D3D yeah. workbench, partially. For example, uh, in order to fast insert parts like uh, extruder for example it's also you know, some kind of uh, library you, you select uh, you, probably you can click a button uh, and then you have different extruders and then you click on them and the corresponding extruder is inserted into your um, drawing Okay. Um, this could be a workshop. Great. So let's. Um, did you start a development page for your three D printer? What we want to do is set up that as a as a specific prototype, as a as a distinct machine. Um, uh, did you do that yet? Or? No. No. Right. Okay. So. No, I, I did. Yeah. It would be good to do that. So, for example, we have the D3D genealogy page, 
And if we go to, just to show you, D3D genealogy on the wiki. And on it, we have a bunch of versions. And the way we're naming them is by the year, point, month. So we got D3D 18.01, D3D Ohio version 18.02. It's actually D3D. We have more than that. We've got D3D 18. Uh, yeah. box is not working for me here okay. wait no can someone explain a d3d genealogy um but in it we have 1801 1801 oh, oh yeah okay we have yeah, let me just type it in. I'm updating it right now. But we have 1804 and 1806. The 1806 was the June 2 build. That was That's counted as a distinct iteration. So that's the actual latest one with the D3D Titan Aero Extruder and the LCD edition and proper mounting of electronics. Um, okay, so let me type that in on a slide. On your slide... I think we should, since we're going into 06, we already have V1806. How about V18.06.12 to mark the date where you actually start that, start the actual development template, yeah? Can we do that? V18.06.12. Yeah. yeah for the 12th of June so we can maintain some kind of order as you see it's an under active development so a development template use the short one the tw which has got about 20 items in it from the development template page and then create a burn down and the instructions are there on the if you look on the it's called what's Lex's page called it's called OSE dev OSC dev page on the wiki. It, it tells you how to do a burn down. Uh, that's an embed from uh, which parses the, the development template and it creates an automatic burn down. Let me put a link to that. That sounds like we actually got some proper procedures here but yeah the burn down is it's good you definitely want to keep track of it because for like when we go into the, the Aussie Fellows program each person will be responsible since now they're going to be working full-time on the thing uh, the goal is every quarter we complete a burn down to a hundred percent which is rarely happened if ever um, but we really got to take that to just wrapping up, you know, some things are at 90%. And, and when you do your template, I mean, you can copy everything that's relevant from the former versions such that you don't have to redo it. But a lot of things will change. So if there's even a slight change, don't try linking back to the old version if there's any change. So I think that's the best we can do in terms of keeping track because we have to remember that every single iteration will be treated like a fork because something invariably changes like for example your frame 
which changes the build procedure, which changes the documentation and so forth. So that's why we want to do a complete run through of the documentation template for every project. Otherwise, we just start mixing everything and you don't know which goes with which. Um, which if you, you know, if we critique, for example, the RepRap uh, wiki, uh, they don't have this structure. So a lot of things are mixed. You don't know which goes with which. On the OSC wiki, we try to keep some order as we go into the future. A lot of our stuff is mixed up, but as we go forward, we want to keep track by keeping every distinct development project, every build with its own development template. All right, does that sound good? Yes, and I um, will spend some time in order to learn all the procedure. Uh, I didn't work with this kind uh, of uh, documents or instructions or methodology in general. I'm sorry, you, you didn't work with what? With this kind of methodology. Yeah. Methodology. Right. Um, yeah, and documentation standards, I think there's actually a, I think there's a page called documentation standards. 